Greetings and welcome to another impressions video here at Words About Games and today we're going to be looking at The Occupation. The Occupation is a first person immersive sim political thriller that thrusts you into the role of Harvey, an investigative journalist trying to uncover the truth behind a tragic terrorist attack that was prompted by, and is subsequently fueling, the massively unpopular Union Act that threatens civil liberties and targets immigration in exchange for increased security, all set within a single government building in 1980s Manchester. It's a fascinating premise that has one very interesting mechanic up its sleeve. The occupation takes place in real time. The game is split into chapters, with your character arriving for a meeting with an important figure to do with the Union Act and question them about it. But you arrive to each of these meetings an hour early and are able to explore the environment freely, searching for clues and following leads to uncover the truth and expand your line of questioning ahead of each interview. The more information you uncover, the more you're able to press your targets for crucial information or even catch them out in bald-faced lies. Or you could simply do nothing, ask your questions and leave. The game's clock will tick away regardless of what you're doing. You could simply sit in a waiting room for an hour, take your meeting and move on to the next one. But where's the fun in that? This unique central mechanic can be a bit hit and miss, but when it works, it feels brilliant. You enter each location with at least one lead, which gives you a starting point for your exploration. As you explore and find more clues, you'll unlock new leads to pursue. You'll also be given new leads by your editor Mina, who'll call you from time to time. It's up to you to figure out where to go, and how to go about finding the information you need, and each of the occupation's levels has been incredibly well crafted, giving you multiple ways to circumvent each roadblock that's put in your way. For example, at one point I needed to copy an email from a specific computer onto a floppy disk. Gaining access to the office that housed the PC could be done in multiple ways. I could find the keycard and passcode to walk in the front door, make use of some scaffolding outside to climb in through a window, or use the building's vents. Of course, I'd have to wait until the owner of said office wasn't around to break in, and I couldn't be sure that I'd not miss out on vital information if I didn't follow her and eavesdrop on her conversation. Moment-to-moment -moment problem solving in the occupation feels thrilling. Each lead has multiple steps, and figuring out how to get where you need to go is pretty damn satisfying, especially when you finally acquire the information you're after and get to shove it in some smug government official's face during an interview. Working around office schedules, restricted areas, alarms, and prying eyes leads to some pretty tense moments as you desperately wait for a file to say of a door to open, or Steve the security guard to walk by, or any number of other variables. It also tells a really interesting story with a delightful cast of characters. Uncovering the truth behind the narrative is thrilling not just because of how you do it, but because it's also a compelling story. It can feel a little disjointed if you're not completing all of the leads before an interview, which you're not necessarily supposed to, as the game is designed to be replayed to uncover everything. It's just a shame that the occupation has so many rough edges and technical and design issues that draw you out of the moment with far too much frequency. I encountered a few bugs in my travels. Some are fairly benign, wonky physics, camera and clipping issues, and funny glitches that momentarily make you stop and stare for a second. Some are more serious, such as the game crashing, which can steal a huge amount of progress from you thanks to a punishing save system that only checkpoints between chapters, each of which lasts an hour. The AI is also incredibly easy to confuse, which robs the occupation of some of its intensity during stealth. If you're caught in a restricted area once, you'll get a warning. Twice, and you'll be fast-forwarded straight into your interview. It gives getting caught some real consequences, as you lose any opportunity to gather evidence. But, after being caught for a second time in someone's office by the lone security guard, I did what any good journalist would do. I ran as fast as possible, ducking into the vents I'd been making use of and figuring I'd need to avoid detection entirely. Imagine my surprise when, a few minutes later, I passed the security guard in a corridor and he stopped me. Not to confine me to the waiting room until my appointment, but to tell me of an incident that had occurred that couldn't possibly have been me, even though I was caught red-handed, and could I just make sure I was staying out of staff-only areas. I put this to the test and became more brazen in my sleuthing going so far as to sprint past the security guard out of a restricted room as an alarm bled and suffered zero consequences. Hell, I even got an achievement for scaring him. It's immersion shattering. And it's also very frustrating as the occupation is a game I badly want to heap praise on. The story and central mystery are enough to make me want to see the game through, probably multiple times so I can piece together everything that's going on. 
The excellently crafted levels and stellar core gameplay loop are both fantastic, right up until the point where you realise how easy the AI is to exploit, shattering your immersion in the world. The Occupation is a pretty good game, but it has so much potential to be far better than it ended up being. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. If you've enjoyed it, please keep it here at Words About Games. We've got tons, tons, tons of content, including our weekly podcast, more impressions videos, patch notes, and our weekly indie game of the week. We also stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And most importantly, have a great day.